Good morning. How are we all? I trust you're all well and safe. Well, last week I started a series which I entitled, Can God? And last week I asked us a question. Can God really use us? And the answer to that question was categorically yes, God can. Because, firstly, our past isn't an obstacle. Secondly, our present is an obstacle. And thirdly, you aren't an obstacle. And this morning, I want to carry on with that theme. And so this morning, I put to us another question. And here's the question. Can God really meet my need? And that's our title this morning for our message. Turn with me, if you would, please, to 1 Kings chapter 17. And here we witness and see God meeting a need. He meets the need using Elijah. So we'll begin at verse 1 of chapter 17 of 1 Kings and we'll read uh, quite a few scriptures. We'll read up to verse 24. But I think it's important that we read the Word of God because when we read the Word of God, God is speaking. So can I encourage us all, as I read the Word, allow God to speak to you as He speaks to us through his word, okay? Praise God. 1 Kings 17, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew or rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the book Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the book Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he, when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks and he called to her and said please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink and as she was going to get it he called to her and asked please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand so she said as the Lord your God lives I do not have any bread only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see I am gathering a couple of sticks and I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar, jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and, she and, and he and her house, household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to bring to to come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his, on his own bed. Then he cried to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? 
And he stretched himself out over the child three times and cried to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, now by, now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you, Lord, as we've read it, you've already spoken. And I pray, Lord God, as we open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to receive from you, I pray in Jesus' name that you would speak to us, Father. Oh, praise your name. Amen. In life, there's one thing that unites all of us. There's one thing that every person has in common. We all have needs. Hear me now, without doubt, there, there will be a time in all of our lives when we experience a need of some kind. There will be a time when we have different needs, certain types of need. Maybe the need may be a, a material one, maybe a physical one, maybe a spiritual one. We, may, we might face times of incredible spiritual need in our lives. And this morning, if you have any need, if you have any need in your life, let me say God can meet it. God can meet our need. Yes, he can. Question, what do we do when needs arise? Most times, the natural reaction is for us to worry. Most times when, when, when troubles come our way, we, we tend to do that. We tend to worry. But we know from the Bible that that isn't God's will for our life. God doesn't want us to worry. God doesn't want us to have fear in our hearts when, when troubles come. Because scripture tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, and with, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. Should we try and meet our own needs? Yeah. You know, because the simple answer is, yeah, because when we have, have it within us to meet that need, we don't really have a need. We don't really have a need. What I'm referring to this morning is those times when we've reached the end of, of our, own, our own ability to meet that need. We've done everything we can. To, to get over the problem. We've exhausted every resource. We've exhausted every re resource. And all we're left with is the experience of our own inability. Our need is staring us right in the face. Well, what do we do then? And the answer is simple, yet we sometimes miss it in our lives. It's an answer given by Jesus himself. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God. Can God meet your need? Yes, he can. Simply what I'm trying to say is this. God, Jesus, can be trusted to take care of all of our needs. Here's the truth. When a need arises, when our need arises, so do our doubts. The devil and the flesh may whisper to us, you know, uh, can God really meet your need? Can can God undertake for you? And if we aren't ca careful, we, we begin to believe these whispers. We, be we begin to believe what the parrot says to us in, 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 our, in our ears and in our minds. I want to say to us, God can meet our needs. And from this chapter, let's see why. Let's see why without doubt we can say, yes, he can. Firstly, God can, God can whenever the need arises. Often our needs can come unexpectedly. In this passage, it's no different. You know, coronavirus came unexpectedly. We, 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 we were all caught off guard maybe. 
We see here during the first seven verses that Elijah was just doing what he had been told to do. Elijah's need arose in his obedience, doing the will of God. He was just doing what he was told and, and then his need came. And isn't, isn't that true? Isn't, can it that be so true for us in, in our lives? We can, be, we can seem to be just doing everything just like we're supposed to be doing, tithing, going to church, you know, living right, and still things come, still these problems come. Why does that take us by surprise? Because Jesus said that it would. He said this, I have told you these things so that in me you shall have peace. In this world you will have trouble. You know, over the years some people have been taught that, that you know, well, when you come to Jesus, when, when you make a commitment to Jesus that, you know, all your problems go and, you know, you, you walk around, you know, and everything's fine and hunky-dory. But the truth is, your problems could increase. But with every trouble now, with every problem now, but with every need now, we have a solution. And his name is Jesus. Can God meet our need? Yes, he can. When trouble, when needs come, instead of standing around, you know, with our mouths open, we're, we're thinking, you know, what can I do? We're supposed to rejoice. At the very least, we, we shouldn't be surprised. Needs can also come through an uncontrollable situation. These verses reveal a widow who was suffering a need because of the wrongdoing of others. Because of the sin of Ahab, Jezebel and the nation of Israel, God sent a drought that affected the area where the widow lived. She was just caught up in an unfortunate situation. And there can be times like that for me and you, through no fault of our own, through no fault of ours. We, we can find ourselves caught up in, in unpleasant situations that bring trouble into our lives. Yeah, sometimes we, we do make our own trouble. But other times, trouble just seems to find us, just seems to come into our life unexpectedly. But this shouldn't take us by surprise. Jesus said these things would happen. And sometimes life does go pear-shaped. Sometimes there isn't a lot that we can do about it. Think for a moment of the many people, even at this time, who may be losing their jobs, losing investment through no fault of their own. Often pain, sorrow and trouble and needs are just part of the human experience. Can God meet our need? Yes, he can, in Jesus' name. Let's face it, our needs, our troubles, have a subtle way of sneaking up on us and, and taking us uh, by surprise when we're not expecting them. They sneak up on us, they leave us dazed. But hear this today, no trouble. No trouble, no need is bigger and greater than God. Never see your problem bigger or greater than God. Because if you see your problem big, let me say, you will see God smaller. We have to see God as big, Jesus as big, bigger than any problem, bigger than any, any situation that comes our way. Because he is greater. Can God meet your need? Yes, he can. Don't let your problem have the last word in your life. So firstly, whatever the need, whenever it comes, God can in Jesus' name. Secondly, God can because he's never caught out. Hear me now. Our needs may catch us off guard. Sometimes catch us off guard and leave us standing with our chins down, wondering what's happened. But hear this, our needs don't catch God by surprise. He's not caught off guard. When, when troubles come in our life, he's not caught off guard. You know, God's working behind the scenes and we don't always see it. Thousands of years, listen, thousands of years before Elijah needed a drink, of cool, clear water, the finger of God traced out the path 
of that little brook. God knew that his servant would need the provision and God made a way for Elijah long before his need ever arose. Praise God. The name of the brook was Jerith. And this is a word which means cutting. Isn't it good to know that God made a way? God made a way to cut Elijah's thirst even before Elijah had his thirst. Now it's time for a drink. Can God? Yes, God can. Because God is on our case. Let's follow this thought and bring it up to, to our day. If God knows all about our troubles before they come, and if all things really do work together for good, and they do, then it stands to reason that God has already taken steps necessary to meet our needs before they ever arise. It might seem like God isn't moving, but the truth is God has already met our need, met our need before the need ever arose in Jesus' name. God will manifest that supply in his own way and in his own time. Our duty is to be patient. Our duty is to be faithful to God. Our duty is to stand on the promises of God which are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He will take care of us. He will navigate us through the challenges, the problems of life. Can God meet our needs? Yes, he can in Jesus' name. Nowhere in God's past provision is, is, more, is more clearly seen than in our salvation. Before there was ever a sinner to save, God had already given up his son to be the means of our salvation. Whoever would put faith in him. God met your salvation needs before you ever had any. If God can meet this greatest need of all, as he did then, he'll have no problem taking care of us. In verse 6 we see Elijah being fed by the ravens. God knew that this his man needed to eat. And God supplied necessities of life to the man of God. And notice God's methods. God's methods at the same time miraculous and at the same time ordinary. They were miraculous in that God used ravens to bring food to the prophet. And ordinary in that he used the common fowl of the air to get his need and his will done. Can God use my life? Can God use your life? Yes, he can. Can God do extraordinary things in your life? Yes, he can. Can God meet your needs? Let me say, yes, he can in Jesus' name. Our part is simple. We need to trust him. We need to believe him at his word, to love him and to serve him. Can God? God can. Because God is never caught out. So firstly, God can whatever the need, whenever it comes. Secondly, God can because he's never caught out. Thirdly, and finally, how? If how is to be summed up in one word, it would have to be faith. Let me say faith must, faith must manifest itself in four areas of our life. And they're illustrated here in our passage. There must be faith in the will of God. Elijah had just confronted the king of Israel and now God is sending him into the wilderness. It must have been a little confusing. But God's people must learn to place their faith in the will of God. Often God's will and our will are two entirely different animals. But the secret of getting your needs met by God is by believing that God knows what's best for your life. Can God bless and use a surrendered life? God can. When the mist of life hides God from us. We must believe that he is faithfully executing 
his plan for us. Praise God. So there must be faith in the will of God and there must be faith in the ways of God. Just imagine how Elijah felt. His brook had dried up. Then God comes along and sends him to a widow so she can keep him up. Widows were poor. They weren't known for putting on an all-you-can-eat breakfast for 7 50 But Elijah knew that God knew more about taking care of the prophet than Elijah did. So he just went. Think of it like this. <coughs> if we just sit around <coughs> and worry what's happening in our life, if we just spend all our time trying to figure out what God's doing, we'll just go crazy, won't we? Most times we can't understand and we can't figure out what God's doing. Proverbs tells us in, 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 in the book of Proverbs, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Isaiah tells us, For your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways, saith the Lord. Hear me now. If we could work it all out, if we, if we think we knew it all, we wouldn't need God, would we? We, 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 we? God had ceased to be God and we think we'd be God. If we were, then we'd fix our own mess, wouldn't we? We wouldn't need him. But we must. We must have faith and tr in the great truth of God's word. That God knows what he's doing. That God knows what he's doing. And we must learn to trust him. Isaiah, let me go back to Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your, my, your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Praise God. Also, there must be faith in the work of God. Put yourself in this widow's place for a moment. She's at the point of starvation. She and her son have enough food left for one final meal. And after that meal, they plan to lie down and die. Then, here comes the preacher. And he tells her to feed him first. Wow. Wow. It must have been a real test of faith for this woman to, to make such a great sacrifice. But she placed her faith in the work of God. Notice, notice this in verse 13. She is told to go and do. And then in verse 15 tells us she went and did. Listen, our actions shouldn't dictate, our situation shouldn't dictate our actions. This is a, is a key, but it's often missed. It's often missed by people when they face a trial of life. If we are submitting our lives to God, he's in control and we're subject to his will for our lives. If he says do, we must submit to that praise God. And next, there must be faith in the word of God. This widow entered the valley of testing when she, she's given the greatest promise that can be given to everyone. Do we see it? Verse 14. The prophet gives her the promise in the form of a seven word statement. For this is what the Lord says. Wow. For this is what the Lord says. What's God saying over your life today? What's God speaking to you about in your devotions? What's God ministering to you through the Holy Spirit? What is God saying to you? For this is what the Lord says. When we have God's word on an issue, that issue, listen, is settled forever. This woman had the promise of God to back up her faith. Now the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Therefore, when we read the statement of David in, in Psalm 37 verse 25, I have been young and now, I'm a, now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging bread. We must put our faith in God. We must trust him. Church, the devil will lie to us. 
You know, the world out there will lie to us. Even our family will lie to us. Our friends will lie to us. You know, while, while, while the universe stands, people will lie to us. But listen, God will never, ever lie to us. And if God has said that he'll look after us, if God has said that he'll, 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 he'll look after us and, and he'll meet our needs, then we can take hold of that and draw from it when we need it in our lives. We can place our faith in the word of God. Can God? Yes, he can in Jesus' name. We need to move from could God, might God. We need to move from that. We must be able to say with confidence, God can and God will. You heard me say the other week that there's two places you can put God in this statement. Can God or God can? Faith says God can. Little bit of doubt says can God. Does this word faith sum up our life? It should because we are a people of faith. It should because we're a people of faith. Faith looks beyond the circumstance. Faith looks beyond the pain. Faith looks beyond what we can see around us. Faith looks beyond. And faith sees that God can and God will. So as I close this morning, can God really meet my need? Can God really meet our need, your need? Yes, he can. And whatever need you have today, whatever need it is, whether it's material, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, whatever it is, bring it to God in Jesus' name. Because God can meet our need. We serve a loving God. We serve a God who is incredibly wonderful. We serve a God who is able. The scriptures tell us he is able to do immeasurably more than we can think or ask according to his work in us. So this morning, as we close, let's just pray together and believe God. Believe that he will meet our need in this present circumstance, in this present situation. Allow God, allow him to meet your need in Jesus' name. Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you would just speak into all of our lives. Minister to us, undertake for us. And we lay our needs before you in Jesus' name. And we say, Father, thank you that you can. Thank you, Father, that you are able. And we, Father, just to receive that in Jesus' name this morning. We love you. We thank you. And we give you all the honour. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise. And we all say, Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah.